Good morning, guys, and welcome to the first episode of FIPS, which is an acronym for Photography Tips. And today we're going to kick it off with five tips that every beginner photographer should know. Number one, be background aware. Now, uh, in a lot of photographs, you don't want trees to be coming out of the top of your um, subject's head or Actually, if you're background aware, just being aware of what's behind your subject as opposed to just the subject alone. Um, you can make some really unique shots, for example, what's called frame within a frame. If you use a wider lens, which we'll go through in on another video, you can get your subject in front of a window and use the light coming through there as a frame in a frame. So you'd have the whole picture like we have from edge to edge here, and then you'd have window in the middle and then your subject and that creates different and a lot more creative photos it draws the eye in straight to your subject a lot faster number two is stay away from automatic it may be the easiest thing to learn how to uh, take photos but you're not actually taking photos in my opinion to me you're taking snaps that's what snapchat does that's what instagram does you take you just let the camera do its thing click the button and boom you have a, a picture now, what I personally recommend is shooting in manual, which is where you have full rain over the camera. But to start off, most cameras, whether it be Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, have a setting called AV, which is Aperture Priority. Now, most people buy a DSLR because they want the blurry background like this. Um, that's down to f-stops. Again, go down in another video. But, the lower that your f-stops are, i.e. f 1.4 or f 2.8, etc., the blurrier the background will be. That's about as simple as it gets. Um, most cameras that come with kit lenses start at 3.5, so you'll get quite a bit of blur, more than your usual phone, but with phones these days, i.e. the Note 8, they are catching up quickly, but I personally think DSLRs are safe. When you're shooting auto, basically what you're telling the camera to do is take every single variable into account and adjust the settings for that, which can take away from the effect that you're going for, um, i.e. you can have a really washed out sky, or which we'll go into later, or it can just be more or less, usually more exposed than you're actually wanting it to be. So which moves us on to number three. Uh, careful of the use of your colours, which is more of post rather than pre-production. A lot of people like want want to add more colour to their photos, maybe of their subject. They want to give them an extra, just a little bit more tan. Having a bit too much gets you looking like this right here, Oompa Loompa Orange. Um, that is one thing that I see a lot on um, my Instagram feed, is that the colours are being used too much. Um, and it can really start distracting um, the viewer because of artifacts that colors that just aren't there suddenly appear. This also comes from low light photography where your photos have a lot of noise. Um, bringing up the exposure too much on that photo can bring up the noise as well and within noise is colors that the camera thinks are there but they're not actually quite um, which makes for quite just disgusting photos. Number four, shoot RAW. If your camera has the setting, change it from JPEG to RAW because the amount of information that the camera can actually obtain from whatever's coming through the lens is drastically increased when you're shooting RAW. For example, JPEG, all JPEG is, is a compression of an image, and then RAW is the full frame. Everything, all the light, all the shadows, all of the colors, all of the temperatures and everything can all be changed post when you shoot in RAW. Whereas JPEG is kind of what you see is what you get. And finally, number five, coming back from the previous topic is overexposing. Now, a lot of photos that you see, for example, Billionaire Magazine. If you want to shoot something like that, this photo, the exact photo that's being printed here, has been done in post. The original photo probably was a lot darker than that. Now in the digital age, we can pull a lot of details from darker images if they're underexposed, um, whereas in film that was kind of the area to stay away from. 
Whereas now, with digital, once the colour, i.e. the sky, once that is overexposed and blown out, the data is gone, you can't bring that back. You cannot bring any detail from pure white back down, whereas darker colours, you can bring them up um, in Lightroom or Photoshop by just pulling up on that shadows button. So, I hope this quick five easy tips to remember for photography helped, and let me know in the comments down below if you found them helpful. And if you did find them helpful, feel free to push that like button as well. And if you found them really helpful, make that push that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.